Welcome back to Midday. From the Gus Macker Hoops Tournament to the return of the 914th and the Friendship Festival, Dave McKinley has our weekly walk back in time when all these stories and more were news to you. Ten years ago this week, another day, another scandal in Albany where it was revealed State Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver, a powerful Democrat, had been secretly paying off women who made sexual harassment claims. He was being defended by Attorney General Eric Schneiderman, another Democrat who'd be forced from office for sexual misconduct. Carl Palladino was sworn in to take a seat on the Buffalo School Board. The Sabres made Rasmus Ristolainen in their first pick in the draft. Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez was arrested for murder. The Gus Macker three-on-three -three basketball tournament was still being held downtown, drawing 4,000 players, and Lockport got five and a half inches of rain in a single day, causing widespread flooding this week in 2013. 20 years ago this week, the Polish Veterans Memorial was unveiled at the waterfront in what amounted to a do-over of sorts and the subject of this week's News to You pop quiz, which is... Do you remember what was wrong with the original monument that forced the folks behind the effort to send it back to the stonemasons for corrections before the memorial was finally erected to the satisfaction of all this week in 2003? Remember, it was the same week the 914th Tactical Airlift Group, after serving months overseas in Iraq and Afghanistan, returned triumphant to their home base in Niagara Falls and into the arms of loved ones, and where across town a deal was signed allowing the Niagara Falls Redevelopment Group to purchase more than 100 acres of properties on the condition they produce $24 million worth of developments in the next two years. We're still waiting. It was a time when school-sponsored all-night post-prom and graduation parties were starting to catch on as a means to keep kids from drinking and driving. It's getting much bigger, and I think the kids are really having a great time. And when the last ever graduation was held at Buffalo Kensington High School. Ten years after leaving the mayor's office, Jimmy Griffin was making a comeback, launching what would be a successful bid for Common Council. I asked him if he was truly committed to getting the job done. Well, some people want me committed, first of all. <laughs> And we lost the great Catherine Hepburn at the age of 96 this week in 2003. 30 years ago this week, when it cost just a buck 25 to cross the Peace Bridge, perhaps to attend the long ago Friendship Festival, a multi day affair once held in both Buffalo and Fort Erie over the course of several days, which included both the birthdays of the U.S. and Canada and which eventually succumbed to money problems, perhaps realized through the use of the once ubiquitous Texas Instruments pocket calculator at a time when many records were still stored on microfiche. We don't have any rich Kelman. A Maryland man named Kirk Bloodworth made criminal justice history as the first ever death row inmate to be exonerated through DNA. <laughs> Julia Roberts and Lyle Lovett announced they were getting hitched after only three weeks of dating. It didn't last. Zima was first introduced on store shelves, and David Letterman did his last show on NBC after 11 years taking a new gig at CBS. Of course, we're taking everything. We're taking office supplies. As we bring the house down, literally, on another edition of When It Was All, news to you. Dave McKinley, thank you so much. And here's the answer to Dave's news to you pop quiz this week. When the Polish War Veterans Memorial was finally unveiled on the waterfront 20 years ago this week in 2003, it was actually a do-over. We asked if you remembered what the problem with the first one was. Well, it turns out that that monument actually had a misspelling of the word buffalo, of all things, using one F and two L's. Ah. So they had to send it back to be corrected later. And Patrick, in this business, we hate misspellings when they appear on the screen or anything like that. But to have it on a monument, a misspelling of the city that it's going that to be is, erected um, in? I, ugh. hey, I'm the first to admit. Yeah, I, it happens I, to us all. I see it on the screen and I'm like, ugh. Yes, but at least we can just but, take it down quickly and correct it. Who brought, I mean, when that person who sculpted that noticed it, you yeah. got to like, do I tell him? <laughs> well, as an L name person, I'm partial to the letter L, yes. so I'll never be that mad about an extra L oh, in yeah. a word.